Hi, I'm Anna White. I'm with the Southwestern Vermont Council on Aging, um, and I'm here today to make some holiday meals with some extra veggies. Um, this is going to be a part of the November and December show, so we thought that we would really focus on how to keep the holidays a little healthier, um, which I think is hard for all of us to do. So what we decided on, what I decided on today, is really to focus on what to do with all of your leftovers. So we're gonna make a uh, turkey shepherd's pie, basically using almost everything you could think of from your Thanksgiving dinner. And then we're also gonna do a little focus on um, Thanksgiving again with sweet potato pie or sweet potato casserole bread pudding. So really, just a fun way to kind of repurpose some of those things that you probably have a ton of after Thanksgiving or even some people use turkey for Christmas, mashed potatoes, um, all those sorts of fun things. Um, but also really great recipes that you could make really any time um, because right, you can make all those things on your own. So um, I'm gonna start with the turkey shepherd's pie. We'll start there and then once that goes into the oven, we'll make our bread pudding. So let's start, I guess. Um, What's really great I think about this shepherd's pie recipe is that you can use anything you have on hand. So we're gonna use mashed potatoes for the topping, turkey for the filling, some frozen corn, spinach, you could do fresh spinach, which I'm using today, or frozen spinach. Um, and then we're gonna make a roux, but really if you have the extra gravy, you could use that instead. Um, and you could throw in any vegetable you like, even if it's something that, like you have for Thanksgiving, carrots or Brussels sprouts, throw them in. And then um, another fun thing that we've done at our house is any root vegetable that you have, whether it's mashed potatoes or my mother-in-law makes a mashed parsnip, really good on top. So just a little minimal cooking to make something pretty awesome. Um, and so we're going to start with two tablespoons of butter um, and then we're going to cut up an onion and get going. So. so I'm going to put that on just a kind of a medium heat. And I'm one of those kind of you just cook as you go. A lot of people talk about something called mise en place, which is kind of having everything ready, um, which is great and it really works. But um, I kind of do a combo pack of having everything cut and ready and then also having everything or doing it kind of as I go because I think the timing for me works a little better that way. So we're going to dice just one medium onion. Um, a lot of cooks will tell you to leave that stem on. It helps to cook the onion or cut the onion, keep it together. I think that's a great thing um, to do. I find it easier for whatever reason just to take it off. But if you're just kind of working on knife skills or getting into cooking, a great way is to keep that stem on, cut the onion in half, and then go ahead and dice. And I'm just going to do kind of a rough dice of this onion. Oh. Um, also, my eyes really water, so if I start crying, I'm not sad, I promise. I'm just chopping onions. <clears throat> All right, so we're going to put our onion in, and you're going to basically cook it for about five minutes until it gets what translucent. So just really until it becomes a little see-through. A really good way to tell is that is your um, kitchen or wherever you're cooking um, is going to start to smell like onion. And that's like a really good way to tell when things have started to really kind of um, cook and get to where you need them to get to. So while the onion is going to start to cook that kind of three to five minutes depending on your heat, we're going to start to cut up the tomato which we're going to put in our shepherd's pie um, and I'm going to start to cut up the spinach and kind of all the other ingredients that we're going to need. So again, tomatoes I always think are the hardest thing for me to cut, but best thing to do is always try to start with any flat surface. So whether you're cutting off this end or the top where you're going to um, kind of core the tomato, just make sure you're starting with a flat surface. And um, if you've watched any cooking show before, I'm sure they've all said the same thing, but it's not a bad thing to reiterate. So like I said before too, the nice thing about this recipe and really any recipe is if you find something that you don't love, like if you're not a fan of tomatoes, you don't have to put them in. You could find something different. Um, I actually think they add a nice kind of fresh taste to the dish that we're gonna make today. But again, like if you don't like it, 
don't use it. Really no big deal. Substitute it. Find something that you like um, and you know you're going to eat because there's no point in making something or taking all the time to make something if you're just going to um, not enjoy it. So again, I apologize for my uh, lack of professional cutting skills. We um, hosted this year at the Council on Aging. We did a virtual grandparents and grandkids cooking class and I had a, the pleasure of working with um, the chef from Stafford and he gave us some really good tips and tricks but I have to tell you that um, cooking and teaching 7 to 11 year olds how to use a knife is um, both very rewarding and very terrifying all at the same time. So every time I cook now I sort of think back to his tips and then I think back to I'm so grateful that we had so many little kids able to do it but none of them you know hurt themselves in the process which I was a little worried about yeah so they're starting to kind of um, light off on aroma which is one of the reasons right they're called an aromatic onion garlic those aromatics that you cook um, so like I said maybe one or two more minutes it's really um, it's not a hard and fast rule, five minutes. It's really just, again, that visual, like are they becoming translucent? Mine are starting, they're softening up a little bit. You'll start to feel that as you push them around in the pan. So that's a good, good thing. And I'm just going to take the tops here and put them away. So I, um, in our house we compost. I know it's a new Vermont state law, so um, I like to just keep a bowl around and I just throw all of my vegetable scraps in there. Um, if you're not composting, I'm not judging you. I just, this is what we do at our house. It works for us. Um, and then we're gonna chop up the spinach. Like I said, you can use frozen spinach if you want to. Um, it's about 10 ounces. And so I'm using about probably 10 ounces of fresh spinach. We um, got a, we did a crop share this year, which has been really wonderful for us. And um, so that's where this spinach is from. If you guys don't know what that is, it's just a way to get some fresh local vegetables um, through a farm and you can go spring through fall. I think a lot of them do payment plans actually, which is really lovely. Um, and so we paid a fee and, and we get fresh vegetables every week. It's a really nice way to take it, um, get local stuff in a re reasonable price. Um, and I actually think some crop shares take um, EBT money and so food stamp or um, three squares Vermont money, I think some of them do that. Or they'll work with a plan for you to help. So always a good option here. All right, just another quick little chop. And if you notice, I'm taking um, the leaves, the best way to kind of cut any leafy thing like this up is really stack the leaves and then you kind of, you roll them up onto themselves. Um, it's a technique called chiffonading. Um, and it just makes it a little easier, a little bit more manageable. You get kind of everything in a similar um, cut in a similar size. If you don't do it this way, it won't matter. It'll still taste the same. Um, the nice thing about cutting everything kind of uniform or at least a, a fairly similar size is just that it all cooks evenly, which is a good thing. So, um, so that's good. All right. My onions are actually looking really good. They're starting to smell really good. Um, and so we're gonna start to make a roux. And a roux is just equal parts flour or, or equal parts fat, so butter, so two tablespoons of butter with equal parts flour. Um, a lot of people use butter. You can use um, really any kind of cooking fat that you want. Um, and then so we'll, make, we'll put the flour in. You're gonna kind of stir it for one to two minutes until it gets light brown. And then we're gonna add some uh, chicken stock to this. But again, if you have um, gravy, like if, we, if you're gonna really repurpose your Thanksgiving, if you have any of that gravy left over, instead of doing the roux, and the stock, um, you could just put a cup of gravy in and that I'm sure that would be delicious. So I'm just two tablespoons of flour right in here. Um, and then you stir it all up and so the butter's gonna, or the flour's gonna start to soak up the butter. And really you just let it kind of melt together until it gets a little brown. Um, 
and that starts to bring out also the flavor. It, um, it's going to sound kind of funny, maybe the, uh, the flavor of the flour and butter. So it's going to give it a nice like nutty flavor and you can actually let this sit for longer and make what's called a brown roux. This is like a white roux. Um, and the darker it is, the less of a thickening agent it is. So this is really the whole purpose of this is to kind of get this kind of nice thick um, creamy sauce that's going to go into our shepherd's pie on the bottom. So the lighter the roux, the thicker that you're going to make something. And a lot of people will use this in like stews or jambalaya, you know, anything you really need to kind of thicken up. So that is actually doing pretty good. I'm going to get a cup of water. Pour that just right into the pan. And then one thing that I really love to use, but um, right, everyone has their own preference, is um, I love well, this better than bouillon. It lasts a really long time, and you just can take teaspoons. It's not; it's a lower sodium content than um, the little blocks of bouillon. So I really love that part about it. But um, And it's less, I think, sometimes when you're using chicken stock or turkey stock or whatever stock, you have to use the whole thing or sometimes the recipe calls for like one and a half of the pre-made boxes and that's sort of tough. So I like to just um, use this. It's really great. You can do vegetable, beef, chicken, um, and then it goes right into the fridge and it lasts for a long time. So this is going to basically cook for maybe five-ish minutes until everything really gets thick. While that's cooking, we're going to chop up some of our leftover turkey. Um, and then usually once that's, once that's chopped, we'll kind of add everything in and put it all together. So I had a friend once who owns a food truck, and he said that he never really used a ton of onions, but he would always cook onions just at the beginning um, so that his food truck smelled really good so people would want to come over to it, which I thought was really an interesting tactic. But it worked, you know? The little things that you remember. So I just have some turkey that we pulled apart. You could put it in just like this if you want to, right? Some people love that nice big chunk of turkey. Um, you could rip it into there if you really want to. I'm just going to give it a rough chop so there's a little bit more of a bite-sized piece one of the best um, advice I've ever gotten about cooking is when you're cooking and you're cutting things, you really want to think about what piece would you like to eat. So like that seems like something I would like to you know eat. It sounds a little funny when you say it out loud, I think, but always when I'm chopping, I think about is that like a size that I'd want to put on a fork and or is it too big or is it too small or whatever. So a nice little rough chop there. This is actually thickened up really well. I'm probably going to turn it down just a smidge. So see how that got really nice and thick and beautiful, and it's just going to be a really nice complement to all of those extra things that we're putting in. So right into there, and then we're just going to add all of these really great vegetables and this turkey. So here's the part two that you really could add any vegetable you want, right? So we talked about if you don't love tomatoes, but if you don't like spinach, um, you could really add anything, whether that is repurposing some of the other stuff from the dinner table, um, like I said, those Brussels sprouts or maybe even some carrots, or if you have some picky eaters at home, um, it might be a great way to sneak in some vegetables like kale or spinach or whatever you want, especially if all this other good stuff is in there, they may not notice that they're eating something a little extra healthy. We'll give that kind of all a stir. And then I'm going to run it to the freezer really quickly because I don't personally, I don't think a shepherd's pie is shepherd's pie without corn. So the recipe calls for about 10 ounces of frozen corn. Um, this bag is about 14, but we're just going to put it all in because um, a little extra is not going to hurt us. So pour all of that in. And then really from here, we're just going to wait until the corn kind of heats up a little bit and the spinach wilts. And then this part, all the filling part, is done, which is great. So comes together pretty quickly, pretty easily. Um, it's probably a good thing to note that um, I have my oven preheating to 375. It's probably, you know, not a terrible thing to mention. 
and get that all mixed in. Awesome. All right. Then a little salt and pepper never hurt anybody. I'll, again, I'll kind of emphasize the little. Um, I would say to your taste, maybe a teaspoon or so. I'm a big fan of just uh, flavor as you go and taste along the way. Obviously, it depends on who you're cooking for, especially right now you want to be really cautious with, with doing that. But um, I think when recipes say, you know, flavor to taste, it's hard, but it's all good at the same time. Sometimes I want to know, but most of the time I just kind of eyeball it. So one more stir just to get everything together, then we're going to work on the topping, and then we're going to get it into the oven and start our bread pudding, which is really exciting. OK. So that's going to cook. I'm going to grab. Awesome. So. Uh, mashed potatoes from the day before, right? So good. Everybody loves them. Um, I think in our house you're lucky if mashed potatoes are left over. But you know, maybe that you have some left over or they're really easy to whip up. Cut them in half, peel them, cut them, and then um, you just put them in some boiling water. Usually takes about 15 minutes depending on how many potatoes you have. But for our purpose, we have some left over. It's really great, very exciting. And we're just going to mix in about a cup of cheese to four cups of mashed potatoes. So get this together. And again, like my favorite thing about cooking, if you want a little more cheese, add a little more cheese. If you're not a big cheese fan, you can omit the cheese. Um, really, that's my favorite part about this whole thing is that it's really up to you what you like and how much you want to go. For me, with cooking, recipes are kind of a good guideline. Um, with baking, probably more of a actual you have to follow. But with at least with cooking, it's a little bit more of what do I think is good? What do I like? What do I want? Um, which is fun. That's the fun part, especially when you kind of get comfortable with cooking. So we're just going to kind of fold in the cheese to these mashed potatoes. Doesn't have to be perfect, just has to kind of get together. So that's good. And while that's going, we're going to give this one more stir. This actually looks pretty perfect. So it's going to go into the oven. So if things like spinach isn't wilted all the way or, you know, corn doesn't feel all the way um, defrosted, that's okay because it's going to cook for about 25 minutes into the oven. And really, um, all that process will happen in in the oven. So that looks good. We'll turn our burner off. And I think we'll go with this guy for everything. So really easy. We're just going to pour the filling into the bottom of the pan, put the mashed potatoes in the layer on top, pop them into the oven for 25 minutes. It says 20 to 30. Um, but again, you Everything's already cooked, so it's really just about kind of getting the flavors to meld a little bit um, and letting everything kind of heat up. So um, not such, such a worry for everything. So It's a heavy pan. I'm glad I like, you know, I hold the baby every day because I have a son, so it helps gain a little muscle, but that pan was kind of heavy. Awesome. So I'm going to put that just on a burner that's not hot anymore. Oh yeah, that looks fantastic. Kind of scrape some of that goodness off. You want to make sure you have all of it in there. And then throw these mashed potatoes with the cheese on top and spread it all out. Oh, I got some like corn and stuff already in there. That's good. All right. So doesn't have to be perfect, doesn't have to, you know, if, you're, if you really want it to look nice, you can spread it all to the sides, um, but it's really not necessary. You can really just throw them on, make sure they're covering most of it. And then, like I said, this is going to go into the oven for um, 20 to 30 minutes. So I'm going to just go with 25.
Awesome. All right, so now to our bread pudding. Um, I know at the beginning we said we're gonna keep everything pretty healthy and, and work on f fixing in some vegetables. So, but I just love dessert and I think that there's a way to make that dessert healthy. So we're gonna use sweet potato casserole um, and make some bread pudding. So I think a lot of people might argue that it's not the healthiest, but you know, we gotta live life a little bit. So we're gonna make it as healthy as we can um, by adding all those vegetables. I'm just gonna get this out of the way. And grab all the things that I need. So we're gonna do skim milk, see, make it a little healthier. And we have half and half in cream, which is gonna go in. We have eggs that are gonna go in. Sweet potato pie, sweet potato casserole, whatever you call it. Um, it is sweet, blended sweet potatoes, a little brown sugar, some butter, and marshmallows on top. So actually the bread pudding that we're using won't actually use any sugar into it because hopefully you have enough of the sugar from the sweet potatoes. Now, if you've made the pie on your own and you know you maybe didn't put as much sugar in, the recipe does say that you can um, use up to, I think, a half a cup of sugar. Really depends on your sweetness. Obviously, less is better. Um, we're not gonna use any in it today, and those recipes, this one and the, the one we're about to make, um, will be up um, on the website so you guys can take a look at those. And then, um, Bread. So I made this the other day with my mom and we were talking about, you know, what's the best bread for bread pudding. I think that any sort of egg based bread, so challah bread or brioche is awesome. Um, the one thing though that my mom brought up is that if you have leftover rolls, like not a lot of people showed up or everybody was staying away from bread at Thanksgiving, you could totally repurpose those. Even if you use these with some challah bread or some brioche, totally, um, totally good. So, so eight cups of bread, which is pretty much one loaf, uh, just a nice cut, a big kind of chunk to it. You can, again, like if you're making this with your family, you got little kids, like they are welcome to take this and just rip pieces off, like totally manageable. Again, doesn't have to be perfect, especially with this because it's all going to kind of cook together. Doesn't have to be perfect, just has to be in there. So um, we're going to cut that up, break it up, whatever you're choosing to do, or if you have a helping hand, maybe you're doing a little bit of both. Um, and then we'll make, so basically all the bread putting in is this, is this, all the bread, and then you mix all of these ingredients with some spices, and then you pop that into the oven, um, which is delicious. All right. So I think another, well, let's see. A good thing also to talk about is not a lot of people have a ton of leftovers for Thanksgiving. Sometimes you're the cook. Um, and you get all the stuff left over. Sometimes you're the guest, especially in today's world, probably not a, a lot of people being guests at home. So, um, you know, whether you do have a ton of leftovers or you don't, you can make any of these anytime. But um, I think worth mentioning is that you don't have to go all out for the holidays, right? A lot of us have budgets, a lot of us have food budgets. I know my family does. And so um, there's a lot of great things out there to make Thanksgiving for under a hundred bucks. And if then the only extra thing you have to get is maybe challah bread, you've made a huge meal for you and your family under a hundred dollars. And then you, you get a piece of bread, loaf of bread, and then you've made a whole other meal. Your family's not bored of eating just turkey sandwiches all day, um, and you've made it kind of fun, but you've kept it really reasonably priced, which I like to be conscious of, especially um, just in today's world, but just always. I think being conscious of that is a good thing. So in here, we're going to mix six eggs. We're going to crack them pretty quickly. A cup of milk, two cups of cream. We're going to throw some spices in, put it all together, throw it in the oven, and then check on our shepherd's pie. So, all right. Always a good idea to crack your eggs either first into something or into a clear container. Um, if you are my husband, and sorry for this one, uh, you'll always get a shell or two into the, uh, into the eggs. He, I think, always manages to do that. I'm not sure how. It's a skill, really. 
a cup of milk and if you don't have a liquid measuring cup um, you can use a dry measuring cup the only real big difference that I learned the other day is that it's just easier to pour from a liquid measuring cup so one cup of skim milk right probably hard to get an exact me measurement of a liquid into that dry cup um, if you don't have half and half you could use a little light cream um, that always works then two cups of this and if you don't have light cream or half and half just use extra milk always an option perfect so those two go in and then you're going to use about two cups um, of whatever you're using so we're using the sweet potato pie sweet potato casserole whatever you want to call it we're going to use that um, but if you have pumpkin or any other kind of ingredient two cups of that to go in so and then kind of whisk or mix just really get everything together we'll add all those other spices and get it going all right so with sweet potato pie we mash ours i think a lot of people do um, but that doesn't mean there's still a little bit of there's gonna be a little chunk in there it'll be okay once you kind of pour it all together um, a teaspoon of cinnamon a teaspoon of ginger a quarter teaspoon of cloves and a quarter teaspoon of nutmeg and then um, a, the recipe calls for two teaspoons of vanilla however if you don't have that um, you can just do one one teaspoon I used one teaspoon because of the marshmallows so one in good get going here uh, probably a big no-no don't pour right over the uh, the bowl you're mixing into I should have learned my lesson I have in the past dumped way too much um, spice in but we'll just kind of eyeball a quarter teaspoon here boom and then I'm using fresh nutmeg uh, it's just what we have on hand I think it's a little bit nicer gives it a little bit bigger of a nutmeg flavor but you can use ground nutmeg or if you don't have nutmeg again you just leave it out grate a little bit in eyeball that that's nice Okay. give it a good stir a quick stir Okay, and then, so, bread in the pan. And then everything just gets poured right on top. Beautiful. And then just give it a good kind of mix in. And then right before you actually cook all of this, you're gonna let it sit for 30 minutes. Um, you can let it sit for, I let mine sit on the counter for 30 minutes. Um, anything longer than that, I would say go right into the um, fridge. Just make sure that you're using some sort of pan that um, can go from cold to hot pretty quickly because once you take it out, um, it's gonna go right into a hot oven. One thing that's awesome about this is you could make it up to a day in advance. So, you know, you make it, you put it in the fridge, you let it sit, and then when you're ready to bake it, you just put it into the oven. So, I'm gonna set that aside, and then, um, you know, the magic of cooking shows. We're gonna show you the shepherd's pie and everything. Um, I have a, a bread pudding that we already made, so we'll get it out, show you what it looks like. So. Bread pudding, when it's all said and done, should be a little bit browned on the top. It smells delicious. Um, I brought a little vanilla yogurt to put on the side if you want it, but you know, you don't have to. Perfect. Awesome. And then this has probably been in about 20 minutes, so could go a few minutes longer. Make sure everything's off. But like I said, it doesn't really need to go too long because everything in it's already cooked. So um, there you have it. Turkey shepherd's pie, uh, sweet potato casserole, bread pudding, a little healthier spin or a little easy spin on the, the holidays. Um, and hopefully uh, you guys make them and enjoy.